When it comes to recognisable features of tanks, the T-90's evil red eyes are probably highest on the list out of anything. Part of a suite of technological advancements made by the T-90 over the Soviet T-72 it was based on, these eyes either side of the turret serve a bigger purpose than just scaring the Abrams with their hellish glow. In fact, they don't even glow when they're actually in use, that's just a parade or video game thing. We'll get to that. The eyes are just a part of what Russia calls the Stora 1 Active Protection System, which serves to defend the tank against missiles without ever letting them hit their target. Welcome back to the ArmorCast channel, my name is Joshua, also known as Koala, and in today's episode of Koala Explains, we're going to have a look at active protection systems and how they work. This video is brought to you by supporters like you. Thanks for helping me keep the lights on. Before we get started, I just want to announce a little Christmas giveaway. If you're interested in winning one of these framed main battle tank posters, then all you have to do is subscribe to this channel, turn notifications on, and leave a comment down below telling me your favourite military vehicle. Mine's gotta be the Spitfire. The T-90 is an evolution of the Soviet-era T-72, and brings many advancements in computing and electronics to the existing layout of the tank. Initially designed as a radical upgrade for the T-72 that would have been called T-72BU, the two prototypes, Object 187 and 188, that were put forth were far too expensive to be accepted by the struggling Soviet Union during its final years. In late 1991, however, the Soviet Union was succeeded by the Russian Federation, and the upgrade variant was reworked into its own tank and given the designation T-90 as a way of proving that the Russian military had left behind Soviet ties. Of course, the T-72 and T-80 would go on to be used, and are still being used to this day, and still being upgraded. But the T-90 would become the face of the Russian military, and is known for those red eyes. What these are are electro-optical jammers, otherwise known as dazzlers, that form the backbone of the Stora 1 active protection suite. Translated to Carton in English, the system was carried over from Object 187 and 188, and works by jamming the controls of anti-tank guided missiles, causing them to miss their target and fly off course. At the push of a button by the tank commander, the APS will activate and rotate the turret in the direction of an incoming missile, allowing the jammers to hijack the missile's link to its guidance platform and feed the tracker modulated signals which cause it to deviate from its trajectory. These jammers must be pointed within a 40 degree view of the incoming target, which is why the system has an automatic mode in which it will override the cruise control and rotate the turret towards the threat, and they have a very limited vertical arc, making them minimally effective against air-to-ground missiles, especially those with a top attack function. The system affects ATGMs with a semi-automatic command to line of sight or SACLOS guidance system, such as the TOW, Milan or HOT missiles used by NATO forces, as well as the Conkers ATGM among others used by the Eastern Bloc. Now I know that everybody is going to bring up the fact that TOW is a wire guided ATGM, so how could it be hijacked by an electro-optical signal when it communicates directly with the launch platform? In actuality, this wire control is to input corrections from a targeting computer, which is still able to be fooled by the Stora 1 system. In fact, the proliferance of the TOW missile was one of the major factors behind the development of the Stora 1 active protection system, which first began as far back as the late 1970s, and was revealed to NATO in 1980 by Soviet engineer Adolf Tolkachev, who was later executed by the Soviet Union as a spy. Stora was first publicly unveiled in 1995 at the International Defence Exhibition in Abu Dhabi on the brand new T-90 tank which had entered service two years prior. Active protection systems like Stora also contain an array of laser warning receivers atop the turret which warn the crew when the tank is being painted by a laser rangefinder or laser designator and can automatically deploy a bank of infrared screening smoke grenades to obscure the tank from view. This helps defend tanks from the types of missiles that can't be jammed by dazzlers. The dazzlers themselves emit an infrared signal which is not visible to the naked eye, which means that idea of glowing red lights striking fear into enemy forces is actually complete nonsense. Why would you intentionally give away your vehicle's position like that? In parades, the jammers can be partly dismantled to allow that signature red light to shine through visibly, but when in combat, the frequency that's being emitted is outside visible range. There is no red light. Stora is an example of what is known as a soft kill active protection system, and outside the T-90, is also used on variants of the T-80U and the Ukrainian T-84 as well. 
More modern variants of the T90, such as the T90M, do away with the Stora 1 active protection system, which is somewhat outdated and ineffective against more modern types of missile guidance. Some export T90S tanks, on the other hand, while retaining the Stora 1 suite, lack the jammers themselves and instead use the system as a simple automatic detection and smoke screening control for cost saving reasons. On more and more main battle tanks in the modern day, we see the use of hard kill active protection systems, such as those on the Israeli Markova Mark IV M, US M1A2C, Russian T 14 Armata, and South Korean K2 Black Panther. These types of active defense systems attempt to launch a physical counter projectile at incoming missiles, which are detected by radar, and destroy them. And they actually predate the soft kill Stora 1, the first of the type being the Soviet Union's Drozd system, which was applied to T 55 and T 62 tanks in the 1970s. Drozd, however, was never cleared for mass production due to its penchant for causing collateral damage to troops around the vehicles and was cancelled in 1981, later succeeded by the Arena system. Active protection systems are, in many ways, the future of armoured warfare, able to protect vehicles with an ever increasing reliability and against faster and faster projectiles like tank rounds. This allows vehicles to shed off some of that heavy armour which modern anti-tank missiles and smart ammunition types attempt to bypass anyway rather than penetrate through and focus on mobility and effectiveness in an urban environment which is arguably the next step in the evolution of armoured warfare. Tanks are super vulnerable in urban areas, which in counterinsurgency operations, for example, is where the majority of fighting is going to take place and your infantry need supporting. With a good active defence system, your main battle tanks can be a lot more useful. Stora 1, however, is beginning to see the end of its usefulness, and with the T-14's future uncertain, its own Afghanit hard kill active protection system may be applied to other Russian tanks in the future or another system developed along the lines of Arena. I'm sure, however, that that idea of the evil red eyes of Stalin that light up to swat away capitalist missiles isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Hope you have enjoyed this episode of Koala Explains and that if you did, you leave a like and subscribe for new military content every single week. Sure to take part in our giveaway and check back in two weeks where we'll announce the winner. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon, you'll get access to our exclusive Discord server and much, much more. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll catch you lads on the battlefield.